Please sit in any comfortable meditative posture. Make your hands on your knees in Dhyan or Chin Mudra. Head, neck, shoulders, back, all in a straight line. Eyes and mouth gently closed. Become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes. Awareness of your head, neck, shoulders, back, arms, legs, the whole body. Now shift your awareness to your breath. Normal, spontaneous breathing coupled with awareness. I am breathing in and I know I am aware I am breathing in. I am breathing out and I know I am aware I am breathing out. Let this be the form of your awareness for a few moments. Shift your awareness to your eyebrow center, Bhru Madhya. And at the Bhru Madhya, visualize the form of either your Guru or your Ishta Devata or a brightly burning radiant Jyoti, the representative of the Guru Tattva, the guiding principle, which takes us up ahead and uplifts us in our lives. And maintaining your awareness on this experience at the eyebrow center, we shall chant the mantra Om three times together, followed by the Shanti mantras. Taking in a deep breath. Om. Sahana Vavato, Sahana Bhunato, Sahavir Yankar Vavahai, Tejasvina Vadita Masto, Ma Vedvishavahai, Om Shanti, 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 Hari Om, Hari Om, Tatsat. Gently rub your palms against each other. Place them on the floor, guys. Experience the warmth radiating from the palms to your eyes, to the brain, to the whole body. And then gently move the palms away. Open your eyes. Ariyo, Tatsat. Namo Narayan Jai. A very, very warm welcome to all the participants of the Swagatam 2023. Today morning, we began the journey of trying to understand how we can take the Sankalpa. What is the process? What is the importance? Today we will go ahead on that path and try to think what is the Sankalpa we have to take. You see, Many, many years ago, there was one disciple and this disciple, 
he was told by the guru please go to the local shop and uh, get a matka you know a clay cup kulhad in which you drink tea at least in the rural india that is done i don't know about the urban india and abroad so when he went across it is a small earthen clay pot just maybe couple of inches tall and he asked for a kulhad the shopkeeper gave a kulhad and immediately said chalo 2 rupees la and the chela was like a bit taken aback i mean like for this kulhad you are asking 2 rupees i don't have any money with me what do i do so he said and theek hai chhod dijiye aapke paas mein he went back to his guru and there he told gurudev he is asking money i don't have any money what do we do gurudev bola are buddhu are tum you don't know the tricks of the world okay go to the kitchen find out what do they need today he came back and said gurudev in the kitchen they don't have dahi curds and we need curds for the evening meal said okay go and ask the shopkeeper to give you half a kg of curds the sample went went the shopkeeper came out ha bolo kya hai abhi he said humko aadha kilo dahi chahiye he nodded his head went inside got a bartan of kulhad filled with dahi and gave it the disciple came back gave the kulhad to the, the you know dahi to the kitchen and came back swami ji kulhad apna dahi leke aa gaye swami ji bole kulhad mila se nahi nahi kulhad to nahi diya to bole pagle wo dahi kis mein laya tumne bole ha ha wo to kulhad mein hi laya to kulhad mila na tumko kitna liya uske liye nahi kulhad ka to koi daam nahi liya keval dahi ka daam diya that is the trick which we must remember when we are taking a sankalpa ask something by which we get who oh, that is there na bolte hain get one nahi kya bolte hain what is that buy one get one free yahi bolte hain na yes swami ji ah buy one get one free wala hisab hai so you ask for something by which everything else can come and that is what is the most important thing so what is that one thing by which we can achieve everything our scriptures have spoken of four types of efforts purusharth to achieve something we need to do purusharth and this purusharth is considered to be of four types धर्म अर्थ काम मोक्ष वट डज धर्म मीन मीन्स द ड्यूटी अर्थ मीन्स रिसोर्सेस काम मीन्स डिजायर नॉट जस्ट सेंशुअल डिजायर्स ऑल डिजायर्स एंड मोक्ष मीन्स द एबिलिटी टू ट्रांसेंड दैट एंड गो बियॉन्ड so these are the four types of efforts which we can do and if you try to analyze everything in life comes in this four categories there is no fifth which comes in just like you have prime numbers in prime numbers you can have multiples of prime numbers but when you start dividing them finally they come to a set of prime numbers and they are the basis so in the same way in our life these four are the basis dharma arth kama moksha moksha is too scary i understand why to leave everything so let us keep moksha aside for the moment let's have some moksha from moksha maybe temporary i want lots of things today morning we have looked into my ambitions my desires 
I want this, I want that, I want this. Oh, this is the goal I will set for myself. That's why these are the objectives and that's why these are the uh, deadlines and that is how I will make my journey ahead. We looked at that in the morning and not only did we look at it, we also tried to create a structure in our mind, used the meditative techniques to work on that. But today, at this session, we need to understand everything can be broken down to these four. Moksha we have left for some time. Let us look at Dharma, Artha, Kama. When I have desires, I want this, I want that, I want that. What is it? How can you fulfill your desire? How can you fulfill your desire? Anybody? By doing karmas. By doing karmas. Okay. Fine. But to do karma, what do you need? Suppose, let us take a concrete example. I want a brand new BMW. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So for that, what will I do to get a brand new BMW? If that is my aim of the year. That to earn that year. much of money. Huh? I have to earn that much of money, work. You have to earn that much of money, you have to work. So when you are working hard, you are earning money, that means you are collecting your resources. Right. Mm -hmm. Artha? Right. So, Artha? So, yes, sir. That's why in Hindi, we are going to do Artharjan. We are going to do Artharjan. So Artharjan. So you have to have artha. If you do not have artha, he cannot come. It's just a fantasy, mm -hmm. not a reality. Mm -hmm. Today morning, we have taken a sankalpa that, oh, I want to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But if I have to do that, what will I need? I will need mm. sources. Correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Depending on my uh, sankalpa, it I will need different types of resources, but I will need resources, correct? Right, mm. correct. And to have resources, what do you need to do? You have to work hard and you have to earn money. So to earn, right. what do you do? Do the right kind of job, right? You know, to earn money. Right kind of job or the wrong kind of job? At this point of time, you right. need to do a job. Right? right? Work hard. Right. right. Then tell me, uh, can a five-year-old boy just get up and uh, start working? No, sir. No. Because he cannot do his capabilities or not to do all that. I mean, to no. earn that. He does not have that capability. Correct? Right. right. Suppose I am a Doctor. Mm -hmm. I am actually. But we, I can chance and make money. A lot of money I can make. And doctors do that. But for that, what do I have to do? I have to study hard, right? Right, right. They say that doing medicine is one of the hardest professions. You have to study very hard. Right. So this boy of 5, 10, 12, 15, he has to study and study and study till the time he comes becomes ready to receive the knowledge of medicine. Then after receiving the knowledge of medicine, he has to work hard, he or she both. Yeah, the person has to work hard so that that knowledge is internalized and one needs to keep on practicing, keep on practicing, keep on practicing. If you lose touch, soon you will la lose your skills. Correct? Not only Correct. But everything in life. Mm -hmm. Punctuality. 
what is this studying what does it mean what do you do in this zone of this four qualities studying okay what when the style of five years goes to class 1 then class 2 3 4 etc what does the child actually do he is increasing his knowledge and growing he is acquiring knowledge and knowledge. is right correct <laughs> if there is a person who has got ability for painting <laughs> he or she goes into painting it that person can bring up that knowledge but if somebody has got ability only to work hard you know heavy duty work mm-hmm. paint will that work no mm-hmm. it won't so that means i need to have some innate qualities and i need to work on those qualities and increase, increase. mm mm-hmm. only when i increase those qualities i earn that knowledge that i can actually earn money and when i can earn money then i can fulfill my desires yes so we might have any desires but to fulfill those desires what is it that we need money and hard work and hard work what what did we reduce it down to learning work and learning. yeah dharma dharma means your innate nature your abilities and the effort put in when we say the purusharth of dharma that means you are actually increasing your abilities day one when i go to play cricket Uh, i hardly hit the ball ball hits me everywhere except the bat but 6 months down the line i can play well right yeah. that means i am training myself i am improving my innate qualities so no matter what your desires are you will have to work on this path it boils down to bringing these qualities up so instead of discipline instead of asking for only increasing my oh i want to achieve this i want to achieve that i want to achieve that if you come down and take the sankalpa of this is what i want to work towards when i increase my skill and apply my skill automatically i get artha the when i get artha automatically it is very easy to fulfill the kamana that is important for us so every desire which we have if i want to draw a painting i need a different dharma to be worked upon if i have to um operate on a patient i have a different dharma to be worked upon so depending on what my desire is we need to find out what is our dharma and if we start work improving our innate capabilities then you will observe that your desires will automatically start getting fulfilled otherwise our desires are there i want to lose weight many people take this sankalpa correct decision has anybody taken this sankalpa nobody has taken any sankalpa see <laughs> so may people take this sankalpa and then in 3 days 5 days 7 days aryom tatsa that sankalpa goes off and the day work life goes on why because we have not reduced it down to the basic and what is the basic everything finally boils down to improving the quality of your mind right when the quality of your mind is good then 
automatically you can train yourself you can do everything that becomes secondary that becomes very very simple very easy so when we take a sankalpa then at that point of time it is essential for us that in the same manner as we have broken down our goal i want to buy the bmw so if i have to buy the bmw i next need x amount of dollars so if i need to uh, my goal has to be to get the x amount of dollars then i need to uh, to do that i need to pick up this job i need to do a b c d e so we have broken everything down but we have not looked at training ourselves we have taken the sankalpa but to fulfill the sankalpa we need to improve the quality of our mind and when we improve the quality of our mind then all the abilities come in many 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 years ago gurudev swami satyananda he was very young and he had decided to take sanyasa and he went to his guru and swami shiva was a very evolved soul that time also so he used to go deep into meditation and after that there would be some difficulty so he asked swami ji about that and one would expect that swami ji would have told him swami shivanand ji his guru would have told him you know use this type of method do this a b c d e no swami shivanand ji he said work hard and purify yourself you do not have to bring the light to you light to you will unfurl of within the light is already there you don't have to bring that light here the light just needs to be opened there is lot of suit which has been developed if you have seen a lantern then you would see that if you raise the wick the glass starts getting black there is a lot of suit which develops and as the glass starts getting black the light starts diminishing so when the light is diminishing if you keep on increasing the wick it will still getting get more and more and more dark because the suit comes up more and more and more instead of that take a pause take that glass out start working and cleaning that without any effort light shines what is true on the spiritual dimension is also true on the physical mental emotional in the worldly dimension we have all the skills potential is there within all we need to do is control our mind i had spoken in the morning janami dharmam nachame nivrutti janami adharmam nachame nivrutti i know it is wrong i can't my mind goes there and i can't pull my mind away i know this is correct but i can't take my mind i am not in control of my mind my mind is controlling me and when that happens then all our decisions go for a toss because the mind is a very good servant but a very bad master to be able to master the mind you need to undertake practices of yoga there are many ways to master the mind but the simplest most effective is to yoga and in fact that is one of the main aims of yoga yoga ha chitta vritti nirodha ha stopping the waves emerging in your mind i feel very agitated i feel very sad i feel very angry i feel all those sorts of feel emotions and i don't know how to handle myself you take a tranquilizer you take a, a mood elevator you take so many pills they will help you but still you don't feel happy and healthy and lively it is because you have kept the quality of mind low so i feel that if we have to take a sankalpa that sankalpa has to be such by which it will encompass 
and the dimensions of our life. Otherwise, I have to take a sankalpa for my professional work. I have to take a sankalpa for my social life. I have to take a sankalpa for my family life. I have to take a sankalpa for my personal life. I have to, how many sankalpas will I take? And if I have to take so many sankalpas, how will I even actually fulfill them? It's very difficult. Much better is work on the mind. And like that example of the curds, the moment mind starts coming into control, all our desires, the resources come in, the desires start getting fulfilled. If you keep running after the desires without improving your innate content, you won't get anything. And then we will be even more frustrated. So, the yogic approach for moving ahead in life is you do not have to become a spiritual person in the sense that you have to uh, renounce the world. No. Yoga is not for renouncing the world. Yoga is for living life only. We are just living 5% of the life. The rest 95% is sleeping, latent. We have to awaken that 95% so that we can live life to the fullest. Desires are good. Live them. Automatically, when you live the desires, you earn the desires, you have everything. A day comes when you move ahead from those desires. At that time, it is very essential to keep moving ahead. When we were small kids, we used to play with toys. And at that point of time, if any of the toy broke, all hell would break loose. Because I would be crying, I would be angry, everything, everything, everything. And two years later, the same toy, I would just chuck it away and go and uh, do something else. By that two years, the toy has left being so important to me. The toy has not changed. I have changed. I have progressed. What would happen if even at this age of being an adult, we would still cling to our dolls. What would happen? We have some doctors here who can tell me what would happen if at the age of 50, I'm taking a doll and playing with the doll and at the age of 70, I'm doing uh, things which I should be doing at age of three. What would you call that? The person has lost his or her marbles, right? Yeah, it's a dementia, regressing. Yeah. You're regressed. So, yeah. The person has gone, gone into la la land. So that means we have a desire. That toy is important for me. And I play with everything. But I need to remember at some point of time, not every time, not when I'm playing with the toy, but at some point of time, the toy becomes less important and something more comes in. While we are children, it is very easy. But as we grow older, then we start forgetting. And we cling on to the same thoughts, same desires, same actions, same thing, same thing, same thing. I want more and more and more and more of the same. That's not going to fetch me anything. The desires which draw you today will not be the same which drive you tomorrow and should not be the same because when they change, it means that you are moving. And as you grow elder, not older, then you start maturing more and you start understanding. And every experience which comes to our life comes and teaches us something. So, therefore, we need to know that first point is we need to identify what is the dharma which I need to work upon. If I need to have my artha and I need to have my kamana. And having done that, having received it, we must be aware 
that we must let it go and move ahead. Don't cling on to the same things over and over and over again. Don't make those things your security blanket. If we do that, we stop evolving. Like that person, 70-year-old person working with eyes. So that is something which is very crucial in our life. And this is where moksha comes in. Moksha means transcending. I was totally attached to this toy, to this game, to this career, to whatever. But after some time, I need to be able to go beyond that also. This is important. When we have experiences in life, when we have negative experiences in life, when we have painful experiences in life, please know that they are experiences which are there to teach us something. And they teach us how and what not to do. They also teach us how to do something so that th that painful experience doesn't come. And until and unless we don't learn that lesson, we will be made to study that subject over and over and over and over again. Suppose you were a teacher, suppose you were a teacher and there was a student who has not learned algebra, basics of algebra or say mathematics tables, two ones are two, two twos are four, two threes are six and so on. What will you do as a teacher? You will hold the child and ensure that the child learns the mathematic tables. And suppose you expect that it is going to take five weeks for the person to learn those tables by heart. And if within one week, the student has applied oneself and learned all the tables by heart, what will you as a teacher do? Will you ask the student to wait for five more weeks, four more weeks? What do you think you will do? Will Sorry? You will go ahead to study more. You will pat the student on the back and say, very good, you have learned your lesson, Chalo jao. go to the next class. Correct? In the same way, in our life, when there is an experience which has come, it is painful, it is hard, it is there to teach me something so that I can learn something from it. And when I learn it, the experience, the pain, the, everything goes away. If we want negative experiences to go away, don't run for, away from them. Welcome them. Analyze them. Understand what you have to learn from that experience. And when you understand that experience and the learning which I have to take, undertake, then the same way my teacher will say, okay, you have learned your lesson, go ahead. So, this is something which is very important. When we take the sankalpa, we may or may not be able to fulfill it. That's always there. But when we are not able to fulfill it, instead of getting agitated, it is more important that we analyze from that. Once we learn this, then we progress in life. So today, on this day of the Gregorian New Year, let us take the Sankalpa to improve the quality of our mind. Towards what application? You know yourself because you know what desires you have. But Everything boils down to that one thing, the mind. And the moment you work with the mind, everything else starts falling in place. And become aware and remain aware of 
needing to transcend these experiences, these desires at some point of time. We need to remain aware to that. What I have unfortunately seen is I have learned everything in life. I have nothing more to learn. I stopped looking at learning. And when I stop looking at learning, then I stagnate. I don't grow. And you know, stagnant waters smell a lot. So this is something which we need to be very, very careful about. No matter how old I am, I am 50, I am 60, I am 70, I am 80, I am 90. Doesn't matter. That is something which is very important. I will tell you a story of a great king who missed this opportunity. His name was Bharat. He was a very great king, very valiant, very able. He looked after the uh, subjects very nicely. And he did a lot of tapasya, a lot of sadhana. He was very, very well acclaimed. And then he said, okay, now it's time for me to go into Vanaprastha. I re relinquished all my duties, gave it to his son, went to the banks of a river, made a small hut and was sitting over there doing his sadhana, doing his meditation. His thoughts were, okay, I have done what I need to do. Job is over. Ah, I'll do my sadhana. Fine. He became complacent. He was not aware. He was not alert. And <clears throat> one day, it was the forest. There was a deer which came across. I think many of you would know this story of Raja Bharat and Jad Bharat. If you don't, then you must look it up. So, this king was in his hermitage and a deer came. She was very pregnant, just ready to deliver the baby. And the lion was chasing her. The river was not very broad. It was slightly narrow. And the deer came running. And when she came to the banks of the river, she was in panic. She didn't know what to do. So she just went back a little bit and jumped. And as she jumped across, midway, the baby, baby came. came out and fell into the river. Now this Raja Bharat was sitting there and he was watching that. And suddenly, you know, out of compassion, oh my God, that little baby went and picked it up. Now, till that fine, everything is good. One should do that. But after that, then that deer became the focus of the king's attention. He was doing his sadhana. Oh, I have to feed the deer. He was doing his japa. Oh, the deer would have gone here. Oh, what is the matter why the deer has not come? He forgot everything of his sadhana and was only thinking of his deer all the time. And the deer eaten has, and you know how small animals are, they win our heart. So he was totally attached with that. Even when he was dying, that was the only thought, oh my God, this deer, what will happen to this deer? Who will take care of this deer? What will it do? That's all he was thinking. And next life, he was born. Of course, because he had a lot of sadhana. So he had the memory of the past. And then he realized, oh, oh, this was a mistake I had done. I stopped being aware and I let myself be complacent. The moment I was complacent, my mind went back in a different direction. So I should never be complacent. Till the last breath of our life, we have to keep on learning, keep on learning. God does not give any breath extra. He has calculated or she has calculated whatever we would like to say. How much we need to learn and how much we need to work out. 
accordingly, he has given the number of breaths. So, even till the last breath, we have to keep on learning, keep on learning, keep on learning. Then, we move ahead. Because, ultimately, we have to remember that the growth is not only of the body, but the growth, the evolution is of the consciousness, that spark of divine which is within us. I am this body. I am this mind. I am this senses. I am this emotions. But that is not all what I am. I am more than that. I am that spark within. In the same manner as my hand and me are different. In the same way, this body and me are different. In the same way as my shirt and me are different. Both are different. If I change my shirt, I don't change my identity. In the same way, the Atma is our true identity. And eventually, everybody is going to reach that place where they are going to connect to the Atma. And if we take that as the base, then everything starts working. Our life starts moving in its own direction. We start Things start falling into place. And that is what is very, very essential in our lives. To be able to connect to that higher form of reality. It is not necessary and it should not be that we give up activities. If you feel that, oh, I have to experience the Atma. Huh, I have to experience the Atma. But the way of the Atma is not just going in, but remaining out and working and working and working and working. That is Karma Yoga. And when we do that, then we are increasing the quality of our Dharma. Automatically Artha comes in. Automatically Kamana gets fulfilled. And then when we have that awareness, then we transcend and another Kamana comes. And you work it out and you work it out and work it out till the time comes when the slate slowly starts getting cleaner and cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. And then the light shines within and you see, oh, I'm not just body. I'm not just mind. I'm not this senses, mortal self and I. That is the ultimate aim. And we need to work step by step towards it. First thing always is improving your dharma. I am coming back to this point time and time again. Because if we do not pay attention to this aspect, our sankalpas will never be fulfilled. There is no point in taking sankalpa if we cannot fulfill them. So therefore, it is very, very essential to know that we need to work on improving our dharma, our quality of our mind, because it is only through that that we can go ahead in life. And that is not so easy. That is not so easy. It is difficult. Because battling the mind is the hardest thing. The more sadhana you do, the more the mind becomes chanchal. So what to do? Swamiji told a very simple trick. Don't fight the mind. Befriend the mind. Give the mind something which it likes to do. Innately, the mind has some likes. And the mind always likes to do something for others. That is the nature of the mind. So, if you involve into selfless karma yoga, seva, and you do something for somebody else, Benefit the person and you walk away without expectation. Initially, you will have expectations, but then slowly you have to work towards getting them down. You will see that the mind gets occupied into that. And when the mind gets occupied into that and you start working with trying to do any activity as Karma Yoga, then you are improving 
the quality of your mind, you are improving the quality of your dharma. And does anybody remember what Swamiji had said about karma yoga? What is it? There are few things which Swamiji had said. How do you define karma yoga? Anybody? Four things, Swamiji. Huh? Yeah, it should be done um, fast. It should mm -hmm. be done perfectly. Mm -hmm. It should be um, correctly. Mm -hmm. Correctly. I'm forgetting the four. Mm -hmm. Fast, accurate, correct, perfect. perfect. Four things. You do anything, whatever you are doing, that is not important. Whatever you are doing, are you are doing jhadu, you are cutting vegetables, you are cleaning the bartan, you are doing your uh, software coding, you are seeing a patient. These are the four aspects. You have to do it fast. Fast means optimum speed. You have to do it accurately, not lackadaisical, uh, slightly here, slightly there. If I have to cut a cloth, it has to be cut straight, not a little bit here, little bit there, little bit there. No, it has to be accurate. Third, it has to be correct. I need to know which is the cloth I have to cut. I might do it very nicely and I might take five hours. Not good. It has to be done optimally. I'm doing it accurately, but I'm using the wrong cloth. It is not going to help me. And if I don't do it perfectly, with perfection, in every small thing, it is not karma yoga. So when I use these four different dimensions, what are you actually doing? You are training your mind. You are not doing a job outside. That is the secret. Today I am revealing that secret. The secret of karma yoga is training the mind. High, fast, accurate, correct, perfect. Because you are training the mind to be that way. That work is not so important. That work has secondary importance. The importance is of that mind. But if you train your mind, and you say that, no, I will, work, I will be sitting here, I will not move this, I will not do this, I will not do that, I will not do that, mind is going to rebel. But when you engage the mind into something which it loves, helping others, simplest thing, you don't have to do it 24-7, one act a day is more than sufficient. So that way you are training your mind. And when you are training your mind, you train your mind on the lathe or in the classroom or out doing seva. Whichever way you train your mind, the mind is trained. And once the mind is trained, it takes you in immediately. All your abilities come up. All the answers come up. All ideas start coming up. The abilities to make it happen comes up. This is the crux. And when we know this, then we get the breakthrough in our life. This year is the year of the breakthrough. This is the birth centenary of Gurudev Swami Satyananda who came as a light shone, dazzled and brought out different aspects of yoga. Not just yoga on the mat, but living yoga. The principles of yoga have to be lived day in and day out. Then there is fulfillment. Then there is enrichment. And when there is enrichment, then things start happening. So this is the year of the breakthrough because it is his 100th birth anniversary. And on this occasion, I am sure all of you know, there are various activities which are being done, conducted. All these activities of Seva, they are basically an opportunity for us to connect with that energy. Be it medical camps, be it nutrition and wellness, Kelkut camps, be it educational, be it shamata samvardhan, employability skills, be it eco-farming and paryavaran samvardhan. We have five different aspects. What can I, when I am doing that, 
it is not important if i am seeing and seeing the patient i am doing the most important thing no whatever i am doing i have to apply these four aspects when i apply these four aspects and give away the ownership of it there is very rapid cleaning of the mind the abilities of the mind come up you know sometimes this network connectivity is not there they are electricity you have one wire you have another wire there is a joint but there is oxidation which takes place here what we call as carbon and that oxid oxidizing powder is created and the connection is broken so we need to scrape it in the moment we scrape it karma yoga is the most effective scraping so that this blockage has gone and the connectivity has been established and once the connectivity is established means <coughs> there is absolutely no problem anywhere that is the importance in our life it is not the bmw which is important yes you might need the bmws you might need all of those things but at some point we need to know that it is the mind which has to be worked with and when we start working with this mind then everything starts taking place so today on the occasion of the new year let us take a sankalpa last 3 days we have worked a lot trying to understand ourselves my strengths my weaknesses my ambitions my needs we have worked upon the purpose we have worked upon and we have tried to understand the multiple dimensions now the time has come that we have to take the sankalpa to make that breakthrough in our life and to do that we need to strengthen the mind and it is this sankalpa that i would recommend to everybody of course you are free to take whichever sankalpa you want but my recommendation would be this for a few minutes close your eyes sit comfortably eyes gently closed hands on your knees in nyan or chin mudra the head the neck the shoulders and the back in a straight line become aware of the different sensations we are able to perceive we have five dimensions five portals the touch the taste the smell the sound and the sight try to become aware of all these five at the same time now let all four go to the background and let only the sensation of touch remain in the forefront become aware of all the touch sensations let this also go to the background and become aware of the taste sensations and the memories of the taste let this go to the background and bring forth the sensation of smell are you able to smell anything any memories of smells become aware let this go to the background and the sensation of sound listen to all the sounds let there not be any sound which is being missed
drop this, let it go to the background and become aware of the vision, the forms, the colors, the shapes you are able to see in front of the closed eyes. The eyes are closed, but you can see some colors or some shapes or some lines or some images. Just become aware of that. Now drop the awareness of this and bring your awareness on your breath. You are breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. Try to become aware of the breath in the base of the throat. Constrict the throat a bit, just like you might do it for coughing so that you are able to experience the touch of the breath in your voice box as the air comes in and goes out there's a very soft snoring sound a purring sound which is created just observe that sound and the sensation of touch at the throat And now visualize that the breath is moving from your navel to the heart, to the base of the throat. As you breathe in, the breath is filling up from the navel to the heart to the throat. And as you breathe out, it comes down from the throat, heart, navel. Visualize a thin tube over here wherein the movement is taking place up and down and up and down and up and down. Manipur, Anahat, Vishuddhi, Vishuddhi, Anahat, Manipur. Breath is moving. Navel, heart, throat, throat, heart, navel. Manipur, Anahat, Vishuddhi, Vishuddhi, Anahat, Manipur, Naval, Art, Throat, Throat, Art, Naval. For some time, just observe this breath moving up and down, up and down in this frontal psychic passage. Now visualize that as the breath moves up from Manipur, Anahat, Vishuddhi and down from Vishuddhi, Anahat, Manipur. Visualize, imagine small, tiny particles of light moving up and down. They are like the corpuscles of light rushing up and down and up and down and up and down as you breathe in and out and in and out and in and out. And this creates a column of energy of light in this tube. Feel the intensity of this energy. Let this tube slowly dissolve away. And this energy now is being shared, diffused all throughout the body, all throughout the mind the emotions, and the psyche. Each and every speck of our being is suffused by this. We are immersed in this energy, light. And this light is vibrating at very great amplitude. As you breathe in, 
become aware that the light becomes stronger. It dissolves all the negativities, all the weaknesses. And as you breathe out, all these diffused impurities leave the body. Fresh energy coming as you breathe in, light lighter, dissolves all the impurities, throws it out. We are strengthening the substratum of our personality, the body, the mind, the emotions and the psyche. Observe this for some time. Then let us bring the energy back after it has completely cleared all the blockages and impurities and made us pure. Then the energy comes back to this column. Become aware it comes and sits in Vishuddhi, the purification center. From Vishuddhi it comes to Anahat. From Anahat it comes to Manipur. And from Manipur, it goes into the deeper dimensions of our personality and disappears. Feel the impact, the quietness of the mind, the happiness, the strength. And in such a positive frame of mind, let us take the sankalpa which we have worked towards repeat the sankalpa three times to yourself mentally and observe that this energy which we have generated is nibbling supporting, enhancing the implementation of this sankalpa. Visualize this completely. And then gently start externalizing your awareness. Become aware of the posture of the body. Become aware of the posture of the hands, the legs, the contact points between the body and the floor, body and the clothes, body and the breeze, the sounds coming from around us, from inside the room, the sounds coming to us from outside the room as well as inside the room. And when we have externalized our awareness completely, then Gently wiggle your toes, move your fingers, roll the neck gently from side to side. Give your body a good stretch, raise your hands above the head, bring the hands down and keeping your eyes closed. And the mind on the experience which we had chosen in the beginning of the session. Install that image once again. And then we shall chant the mantra Om three times followed by the Shanti Pa. Taking in a deep breath. Om. Om. Oh, Asatoma. Oh. 
Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityorma Mrutam Gamaya Sarvesham Swasti Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Loka Samastha Sukhino Bhavantu Om Trambakam Yajamahe Sugandim Pushti Vardhanam Urvar Kamiva Bandhanam Rityor Mukshiyamam Ratat Om Shanti 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 And Sintranamudra Twameva Mata Chapita Twameva Twameva Bandhush Chasakha Twameva Twameva Vidya Dravidam Twameva Twameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Twameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Twameva Sarvam Mama Deva Deva Hari Om. Hari Om. Sat, gently rub your palms against each other. Place them on the closed eyes. Experience the warmth radiating from the palms, the eyes, the brain, to the whole body. Then gently move the palms away. Open your eyes. Hari Om. Sat. So with this, we complete our Swagatam 2023 and we have enabled ourselves to work towards fulfilling the Sankalpa and achieving the breakthrough in our life this year. So with the best wishes and the blessings of Gurudev, Namunarayan,